I was just looking at understat at understat.com where they do all kinds of things but in particular I wanted to look at their expected goals because I've been hearing about expected goals but I haven't really studied them I don't have the underlying data I don't have a expected goals model so that I like so that I can work it out myself but we can just have a look and build up an intuition about you know whether it's any good so the basic idea is to look at the various opportunities that occurred in the match to look at the shots that were taken and see how likely they were to lead to goals so if one team had many shots that were taken from outside the box a long way off the likelihood of them becoming goals is quite low well if the other team had multiple chances where the striker was one on one with the goalie inside the box very near the goal that that typically converts to goals far more often so by having models and with time these models should get better and better or at least we'll know which models are the are the good ones we're able to end up with a model that gives a fair reflection of the match so you can have matches where one team totally dominates but the ball just doesn't go in the score will say it was nil all the shots on goal might even say that they both had 10 each but if one of the teams as i said only had very long range shots they don't really count they're very unlikely to become goals so with an expected goals model we can get a measure of what the fair result was and here it looks like maybe 3-1 2-0 is pretty close so that seems like a fair result Newcastle versus City was 2 all but the expected goals looks like it should have been 0-2 so Newcastle had a good day or City had a bad day Burnley Palace Burnley should have won 2-1 but Palace won 2-0 Chelsea should have won 3-1 but West Ham won 1-0 so that doesn't give me a very good impression because the expected goals often seem to be different from the final result so the expected goals don't seem to i mean if if they accurately gauged what happened in the match you can have occasional games where well, one team had four really good chances but none of them went in but if it happens all the time then my faith in the model and how well it's able to predict how what should have happened is lower the point of this was trying to look at this data to look at the expected points so here we can see if 
the scores had been the expected goals as opposed to the actual goals, this is what the table would have been. And basically, C City should be ahead of the league. They should be on about 33 points and Liverpool on 28. But actually, Liverpool are 11 points ahead. So then, because I want an actionable result from this, I mean, what's the point of this? What, what was I hoping to gain from the insight which the expected goals gives us or tries to give us? So it's still early in the season. I still remember when Newcastle under Keegan won, was it 15 games in a row at the start of the season and were running away with it. But then United caught up and beat them. So yes, it looks like Liverpool are going to win at this stage, but it's not a sure thing. That's why I was looking at the expected goals to kind of see, okay, does it look like Liverpool, yes, Liverpool are well ahead. And if Liverpool were also playing better, you know, um, creating more chances, having a better defence, if all the underlying statistics were also supportive of Liverpool, then I'd have to go, okay, yeah, Liverpool are the best team. They are the European champions. Um, nothing, nothing to see here. Like um, they're they're the best team. I suspect they're going to win. But this introduces for me a question mark. That well, hmm. Liverpool are in the lead, but actually, City are playing better City deserve City should be topping the table the luck just hasn't gone their way and so off to Betfair and here I can get City at 5.1 is that tempting enough if I invert the axes I can get the probabilities so earlier on in the season the market people thought that for sure City were going to win they have such depth in their squad they've consistently been getting incredible point totals they were nearly 75% likely to win and nearly half the money has been bet on City to win. As the season has been going on and Liverpool have kept getting late goals and holding on to wins. While City have dropped multiple points. I mean, they've lost three games. One, you can kind of go, oh, that was a bit of a shock. That can happen. But two, then three, City might have burnt out a bit. It's very hard for a team to keep winning and winning and winning. So now City are down to only a 20% probability of winning. But if I switch over to Liverpool, again inverting, Liverpool early on in the season only had a 20% chance of winning according to the market which is where City are now and now Liverpool have a 75% probability of winning but we remember only a couple of months ago the market thought that City had, were surely going to win the league so it's not as if the market is 
100% right. This is 75%. This is not 99%. So, ideally, I would like to have maybe 10 seasons or more of data. Ideally, I would like to have many examples where I could look at, oh, how good are these expected goals models? Do they tend to be right? But I don't. So at this stage, what I'm going to do is have a look at this. If, if you look at how well the expected goals tables compare to what actually happens in the end, then that could be useful. That could lead to a nice model to predict what's going to happen. To see through the illusion of what the table is at this moment. Basically, is the table as it is now the best gauge of reality? Or the underlying statistics? Like we can see using the expected goals. Only time will tell. I'm not treating the expected goals prediction as being a magical formula, as being incredible. I'm just doing a little taster. So only having five euro at reasonable odds. Hopefully, if the odds tighten up later on, if you will get an injury or two, if City start picking up momentum, we could see the odds drop from 5.1 to closer to 2. And at that stage, we could hedge out. So that's just what I was looking at this morning. I, I was just having breakfast and I heard of uh, understats.com on some podcast, I think. Um, and I thought, oh, I'll have a look at that. And from that, I could see that, oh, here's the expected goals. And the associated question with expected goals is, for me, are expected goals a good gauge of the actual state of things? Or, like with the various results they were predicting, are they still a work in progress? I don't know what your thoughts are. Any comments would be appreciated since this is all new to me. Thanks.